Racing fans, the name Terry Haddock is not a new one, but his success of late is bringing smiles to many across the country. And your sponsor is right off camera. And he said, we're just a little operation and we're doing it. What chapter is this for Terry Haddock? This is the chapter where we thank God every day for letting us do this. Thank him for bringing us these sponsors and my friends and family that throw money at this car because I went home with the wrong parents and I don't have the budget to do this. And every week we come out and show that when we get a little bit of funding, we can compete with these guys. So we're just so happy to do it. And thanks to T&D Express for letting us and all the other people that make it happen. You're racing your hero in round one here today. Do you still chuckle at the idea of racing John Force? I sure do. You know, John was the first round I ever won out here years and years and years ago and when we beat him that time he never shut up about it for the rest of the year which really helps a small team like ours and uh, I just like racing them I, I mean all these guys when we can come out and race the best in the world we're just lucky to be here when you think about it so it's cool I'll, I'll race anybody it's fun but the race John would be neat to beat him today his fans would certainly love it. It would be one of the biggest upsets of the season. We look down for the Pet Boys drone. John Forrest, the peak performance Camaro left side. Terry Haddock inside the Mustang on the right side here as Haddock's team makes one last peek around the race car, as does John. So we can see that Forrest Majeure, John is the premier and dominating force statistically in funny car racing so far this season, leading really almost every major category. In this first round matchup, a little disparity in the round win-loss record. For Terry Haddock, a career round win-loss record of 12 wins, 106 losses. For John Force, 1,459 round wins against 677 round losses. But if you are, in fact, as good as your last run, Terry Haddock stands a good chance. He only ran a 414. He's the 10th off, but only ran 269 miles an hour. That car did not run the last 800 feet. Tony coming in from the top rope here. All right. Car swerve. Oh, Haddock, and, and rather, Forrest explodes one violently across the racetrack. An absolutely brutal disaster of a crash for John Forrest. The car exploded, it blew the body off it, and it came across the racetrack and made violent contact with the left wall. It is skidding to a stop now as the NHRA safety safari has already mobilized itself to respond at the top end. Boy, that is as bad a one you're going to find out here. Yeah, anytime you have a lateral impact on the wall, that is really the toughest hit that a driver can take. There is padding. There is a series of padding that is located within that roll cage, but you'd prefer to go head on or, of course, even back first because there's part of the chassis that could absorb a lot of that energy. The tire can absorb some of it, but that is a hard impact. I'm sure that safety safari is going to look at John. It seems like the fire has sustained itself. The, uh, that really shouldn't be a concern. The concern is going to be to look at John Force and to make sure that that um, that he he shows some signs of being conscious. I think it's important to point out that John had control of this car when it was spinning the tires. It was sashaying back and forth. But there are a couple of things that really stick out. The explosion happens right at the finish line. There's no parachute deployed by the driver at the finish line. There is a safety shutoff system. There's no parachute deployed at a quarter of a mile. And of course, during the explosion, it really limited the driver's view. It, was, it wow. appeared to be a chance that John, even after the explosion, after it goes to the right, could have controlled the car to head into the sand trap. However, without that visual, he wasn't able to drive the car. And we watch this, and the car makes this kind of long arcing corner, and it carries almost all of its 302 miles an hour that it came across the finish line with to that other lane. We can see the course correction really made here, but as you pointed out, Tony, it's a face full of fire now. It, and John's instincts were 100% right. He was still driving the car, but once the body lifted and impeded his visual, which is by design, those tethers have to keep the body on the race car you want to keep the harm the fans out of harm's way the driver the driver is going to accept some of that risk it did limit his view but that you saw after it started to veer to the right his instincts pointed him in the right direction however because of the explosion it just made that hard impact on the left side of the track the chrome wally steel cocoon that these drivers sit in they have a protective shield to try to keep as much debris and fire off of their extremities as well as you can see now John Forrest is exiting the vehicle with the aid of the safety safari yeah and this is a good sign I, I don't know whether or not he lost consciousness however this is a good sign they need to get him out of the car they instantly need to put him on a board keep his keep his physical 
movement uh, to a minimum, but this is John Force. This is as tough as it gets, and this is the sign we wanted to see, that he is moving and they're getting him out of that race car. A 75-year-old man uh, among a very small section of human beings that could even survive this at any age, let alone at his, at his age. We watch one more time and just such a violent, violent explosion. More violent than we've seen all season, maybe the last couple. And we've seen these explosions, but at the rate of speed, at 302 miles an hour, and you can see because there are no parachutes, it doesn't scrub much, if any, of that momentum off of the car when it goes hard into that wall. And you can see that massive rear Goodyear slick. And again, the, the speed still being carried by the car because the body was tethered. It acted almost as a parachute effect to nearly lift the entire thing and float it in the air. We can continue to follow the progress here of the NHRA safety safaris. They have now gotten John on a stretcher and will load him into an ambulance. You can clearly see he is alert. He is communicating. He's just sat up under his own power here. It is... Um, it is now you can see Austin Proc is down there. Brittany Forrest is now down there. Certainly their concerns are paramount to John's safety. But the safety safari doing what they have done since the inception of NHRA drag racing is the concern is very, very read, readily available on Brittany's face. She's going to climb in the ambulance with her father. Austin Proc is down by the ambulance. Amanda Busick is with him, and Austin is, uh, Austin is shaking. Then HRA Safety Safari was to John Forth within seconds up here at the top end. John Force's team made their way to the top end. Brittany Force's daughter as well. His teammate Austin Proc at the top end as well. What can you tell us about John Austin? Well, he's one tough son of a bitch. I know that. Um, he'll be back. It, it, I just, it just sucks to see someone go through that. So. Um, I hope he's all right. Keep him in your thoughts and prayers, and I know he'll be back. But we got work to go here, so. And Austin Brock will be racing, certainly with a mind that will need heavy concentration on his own work, but certainly a mind that will be reliving this moment, and a moment that so many fans will be reliving as well. The greatest funny car driver of all time injured, and he has been transported from the facility. Stay with us.